This is the first in a series of companion videos that I'm putting together to help our students on the distance learning and in-class students for the intermediate license. What you're seeing in front of you is a collection of bits and bobs that you'll need to complete many of the practicals in the book. Um, today we're not going to use all of them. Today on this class we're going to build a simple DC circuit as specified in Worksheet 5 of the Intermediate Licence Handbook. And I'll take you through exactly what we're going to use and just show you some tips and techniques on making it work first time. OK. You'll need yourself a piece of wood uh, to mark out and put the circuit on. We're going to need about five drawing pins, light bulb and bulb holder, a couple of screws or some double-sided tape to hold it down with, a battery compartment to hold two AA batteries, small pieces of wire about three centimetres long, I've got four of them here, and two resistors. We're going to need a 2.2 or 8.2 ohm resistor and we're also going to need a 470 ohm resistor as well and obviously a battery clip to fit it on with. We're also going to need some solder and perhaps this is a good time to show you the sort of tools that we're going to need to put this kit together with. Okay, so working top to bottom, I've got a soldering iron. This one is a uh, 12 watt soldering iron. Anything about 15 or 18 watts is fine. Uh, that one's probably a little bit too small to be honest with you. We've got some cutters, some solder, needle nose pliers, a solder sucker, a wire pair of wire strippers, screwdriver and a multimeter. So worksheet 5 requires us to build a simple DC circuit and the best way for achieving that is to use a wooden board and some drawing pins. And what we will do is we will connect some wires to these drawing pins as per the worksheet tells us and that will allow us to create the circuit and also put in our resistors and connect our bulb as well. So a couple of tips on laying this out. First of all, get yourself your, your wire, four strips of about three centimeters long, and just generally lay things out on the board before we start attaching everything down. Another keen tip as well is that when we put the drawing pins in, don't push them all the way down. Just gently push them into the board so they hold their own. Not like that at all. So you can easily get them out again as well. We're going to solder on the top of these and a point to note as well is that when we do solder on these, these will stay hot for an extraordinarily long time. The other advantage as well is that if you leave them proud, when we put our resistors in, we can push them underneath, then crimp them down with the drawing pin and then bend the legs, legs back over on themselves and solder onto the, the, the actual pin that way. That holds the component in place quite nicely. So let's go ahead and lay everything out and see how we get on. Okay, so I've basically laid out my pins now where everything is going to go. Um, I'm going to have uh, one connecting wire there, another wire there, there's going to be a shorting strap here, and then finally there's going to be what will be our switch going there as well. So that's fine, happy with ev everything. As you can see what I've done here, let me move it around so you can see a bit better, what I've done here is I've pushed the pins in and I've put the components down on the deck and I've allowed a, an overlap and what that will mean is that when I tin these and then push them down I can bend the components up and solder the components straight onto the uh, pins. Okay we're going to tin these pins now with our solder and uh, that will allow us to connect our wires and our resistors.
So let's set that aside for one moment and allow it to cool down completely. Okay, so prepping the cables, it's very easy. Take a wire, strip off a piece each side. We're using solid core, where are you? We're using solid core cable in this instance. Easier to work with on these kits. Of course, if you've got braided cable, that will work just as well, but this is easier to work with. Okay, good. So hopefully our pins have cooled down now. I want it still a bit warm. They're good. The first thing we need to do is we need to put our resistors in. This will make it easier because later on in the course we're going to be adding some more components to this circuit and taking some components out and these can stay in place quite easily. Good. So let's now attach our wires. We took one of our wires here which we're going to feed into the um, light holder and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a small bend in the end of the cable. Can you see that? I'll bring it a bit closer. I've just made a slight bend. There we go. And that I'm going to hook underneath the screw of the bulb holder. Now these bulb holders are great except that if you undo them too much, like that you see, they don't, un they don't do up ever because there's a nut on the bottom of these bulb holders. So I'm going to take the bulb holder off and I'm going to hold it in place as I tighten up the screw. So just holding the nut on the underside of the bulb holder allows me to tighten that up. Okay, we'll do the same on the other side as well. That's good. I'll fill that one tightening up as well. Good. So there's our there's our two wires connected to the bulb holder. So just a case of putting that back in place on the board. So just like we did before, just need to make a good electrical connection now between the component, the pin and the wire. Good. And then finally, the battery connector. And the red one goes on here, and the black one goes on here. Perfect. So all we need to do now is put the bulb in and connect some batteries. There's our bulb, and I need to go and find some batteries because my son has stolen all of mine. I'll be right back. 
Right, well, sorry about that, but uh, some considerable time later, I had to nip to the shops to buy some batteries. I didn't realise that we were actually out of AAs here at home. So, um, batteries connected, everything's wired in, put the bulb in, and we'll just attach the, uh, the, the, the strap there to the switch. And there we go, we can now see that we've got a full circuit. Just to double check and make sure that everybody gets the resistors run the right way, uh, because I didn't. Make sure that that's R1, which is the 2.2 uh, ohm, and make sure that that's the 470 ohm R2, R1 and R2. So the only thing now to do is to mark the board up as per the worksheet uh, with all the connections, and, uh, and we're good to go for the rest of the course. And there we are then guys, there's the finished circuit already made. And if we look at the circuit diagram of figure eight in the book, you'll see that that's indeed the circuit that we've made here. All labelled up now from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Y on our shorting strap, plus and minus on the bottom there. When you make yours, put your call sign in the middle and uh, for our distance learning guys, feel free to upload it to our online classroom. I hope this has been of use to you anyway, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Send me through for now.